now we can transition to our next session, which will be led by Tito, where we'll be able to learn how we can design structures using DNA, which is a really cool topic. Hi, my name is Tito, and I'll be talking to you about designing DNA nanostructures. So a brief intro, I'm a third year PhD candidate in mechanical engineering at CMU. I grew up in Lagos and in Texas with a major in mechanical engineering and a minor in computer science at Texas Tech. So why biomechanics? Um, I'm sure you all know by now, uh, the biomechanics is the study of movement and forces of humans, animals, and biologically inspired robots. So in mechanical engineering, we can explore the mechanics of motion um, using structures made out of DNA. And biomechanics has a lot of applications in um, medicine, robotics, physical therapy, engineering, and so much more. And in this video, we can see DNA nanostructure opening and closing. So what is DNA nanotechnology? I can start by explaining uh, DNA. DNA is a nanoscale structure, and that means that if you compare the width of a strand of your hair, it's roughly 100,000 DNA strands. You can think of DNA like a twisted ladder with side wheels that move in the opposite directions. And you can see that with this red arrow. And the steps of the ladder comes together because of the complementary bases where adenine A binds with thymine T and cytosine C binds with guanine G. And DNA uh, nanotechnology uses DNA to make cool structures. One way to make uh, a cool DNA nanostructure is by folding DNA or DNA-like origami. So, um, the scaffold strand, which is in white here, creates the structure while the staple strands come in and just like paper uh, staples the pieces of the scaffold together, um, like pieces of paper. And in the middle, we can see a DNA self-assembly using the scaffold in white and the staples in purple. So in the video to the right, we could see um, how the staple strands hold the scaffold um, a strand in place. Um, and because of a special property of DNA, which I mentioned before, due to the interaction of the complementary base pairs, it makes DNA a really good construction material. And feel free to like, just shout out your questions or I can look at the chat later. So DNA has really cool applications. In the left, we can see uh, an application for drug delivery where the medicine gets to the location of where you wanna treat without harming the rest of your body. To the right, we can see a molecular robot performing a cargo sorting tasks on DNA origami surface. Um, and this has potential applications in uh, programmable therapeutics where you can program a nanobot to attack a disease. So now to the main bulk, DNA origami design tools. So to make these structures, you need a blueprint of your structure to lay the scaffold along. Here I'm showing you two famous DNA origami design tools. To the left, we have CAD Nano, which is a manual design tool where you actually design your model of the structure. So you design it at each base and you work your way up to the overall desired structure. And to the right, we have Magic DNA, where you could make dynamic structures, kind of like that opening and closing that we saw in the previous slides. So my research focuses on uh, removing the requirement of blueprint in DNA origami design tools um, using a really unique approach that I'll explain in the remaining slides. So what if I told you you can uh, use the same tools to generate Harley Davidson brand designs to design DNA origami nanostructures? This tool is called the uh, Shape Grammars. And shape grammars give instructions of how to put together objects for a required function by simplifying these objects to uh, two-dimensional or three-dimensional geometric shapes. So here to the right, 
we can see a simplification of different parts of a Harley Davidson motorcycle. You can see the motor here simplified to a two-dimensional structure, the top a motorcycle, and below I'm showing you um, a generated Harley Davidson design. Okay, so we can use the same method for how to design in the nano world. So I was able to develop a tool that automatically creates the scaffold blueprint using a shape grammars and simulated annealing, which is called the shape annealing, which is just a combination of um, shape grammars and simulated annealing. With my shape grammars, I just was able to create a rule of three-dimensional shapes that um, I'm sectioning my scaffold for continuous growth and um, simulated annealing. It's a complex method, so I won't go into much detail, but you can kind of think of it like if you're given a, a line model with a lot of noises or, or bumps and you want to find the lowest bump, you pick random points along this line model and it's sort of directed random selection towards the bottom. To the right here, if we were looking, but I can uh, go back, you can see the growth of the scaffold. If you're given an input shape and you're uh, requiring the scaffold to grow within that uh, shape. And uh, this is the resulting shape at the bottom. Hey, Tito. Yes. We have a question in the chat. Olivia is asking, what is the benefit for designing DNA origami and what purpose does it serve? DNA origami is just one of the methods for designing or for creating DNA nanostructures. In my previous slides, I showed some of the applications. Uh, a main benefit for using DNA because it's uh, compatible with the body. So you can easily like make these structures that um, your body won't reject. That's like the main driving force behind DNA nanotechnology. And one of the applications, like I mentioned, was uh, drug delivery, where you can have a drug that is uh, encapsulated by a DNA nanostructure. So you can sort of think of it like a shell, kind of like the capsule drugs. Um, so you can think of it like a shell and then you send it into your body and it goes towards locations where you want to treat and it delivers that drug. We also have a second question. How is DNA origami different slash similar to genetic editing tools such as CRISPR? So I'm not fully sure of that answer because um, I don't really have much background with CRISPR, but Ashley or Lauren, do you know? So I believe CRISPR works a little bit with RNA, um, mm -hmm. and that's another structure within cells that are very similar to DNA, but there are some, a little bit of differences. And with DNA origami, I don't believe that you're necessarily editing anything genetically, whereas that's no. what the focus of CRISPR. DNA origami, we're I believe you're essentially just making a new structure, but using DNA yeah. as your building blocks. And this can be used um, kind of what Tito was saying as in, in a lot of applications such as like drug delivery. So if you want to think about like, even when you eat like a pill, typically the medicines inside of like that pill mm -hmm. capsule. But in this case, instead of like a little plastic capsule, we're having DNA hold the medicine inside. And this is different from CRISPR since CRISPR is more, focusing on editing bits of the genome rather than creating just this different structure. CRISPR can also be used to replicate strands of genetic material, but this is a little bit different since we're not uh, necessarily just like replicating those materials. I would also expect that you probably could use some of those CRISPR tools when you're actually fabricating some of the uh, DNA origami, depending on what strands you need. Yeah, I mean, um, so the staple strands are artificially made. And right now, the scaffold strand is gotten from M13 bacteriophage. Yeah, this is, these are great questions. Yeah. Feel free to leave us more in the chat. Or mm -hmm. if you want to, you can also unmute yeah. and ask more questions. If mm -hmm. not, I think, Tito, you can continue with yeah. your presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we can also generate bunnies. If my tool is given a bunny shape, it can fill the, the bunny shape with a scaffold. So these are two unique uh, blueprints of the scaffold. 
Um, and this is how it looks in solution. Right now, there's still like a lot of work to be done, but this is like a first step to my tool. So now let's design a DNA nanostructure or a simple demonstration of a DNA nanostructure. Okay, so we're going to be designing an icosahedron, which is a 3D shape with uh, 20 faces um, consisting of all equilateral triangles. You can use a, a wireframe icosahedron made out of DNA for drug delivery. And this is below, we can see how it looks. You can visualize these structures with AFM, which is atomic force microscopy. So let's start making these structures. Okay, can you see? I think you can. Looks great. All right, nice. Okay, so um, the first step in the slides that I gave is to make a pentagon with the sticks and the balls. Um, and we just basically like connect the balls to the sticks um, using a five, five sticks. So it's really simple. You just have to make sure that um, you connect it with the right polarity. Um, I'm not sure I can like, ah, so you can see how it looks <laughs> with the final. And then you add, um, you add six perpendicular on the ball. Um, and feel free to like ask questions about this assembly if you don't understand. Um, and then you add another ball on one of the, the perpendicular six. It can just be any. And then you sort of move it so that they all uh, connect to that ball. Um, so it's supposed to look like this, if you can see. So we're just gonna do another one of it too, because we need uh, two of the tops of the icosahedron. Um, where we create that pentagon again. And this is how the pentagon looks. And we attach six perpendicular again. Um, and the other ball on top there. And like I said, you just like push it so it all sticks. And this is it. Okay, so once you have your two tops, um, and let me know if I'm going too fast because I'm about to move on to the next slide, but once you have your two tops, you can create, th this is how they should look. Um, I'm not sure if my video did it well, but um, in the slides, you can see how they're supposed to look like. And then you create, you assemble the middle of the um, icosahedron. So you can flip one of them. I just decided to pick a random one. And you assemble triangles on the balls. Um, if you can see, this is one triangle. And I'm just going to keep on making sure that it, it actually like sticks at the top too. And feel free to like assemble other cooler shapes if y'all are like really good at, <laughs> at this. Um, but you should have this, which is just, if you can see around, it's just like, equilateral triangles. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that top, um, move on to the next slide, which is the final step. So you take that top and you stick it on the tops of the triangles. Yeah. 
and that last one. And now you should have your own icosahedron. <laughs> yeah. Feel free to ask me more questions. There are now a couple of questions in the chat. Tito, would you like me to read them to you or do you want to just go through them yourself? Um, I think I saw, uh, you said cool. like what other applications. Um, I mentioned the cargo sorting and nano casting, which is like a, one of the applications that I'm hoping to drive with my tool where you have a seed. So imagine a seed, it could be the ball in here. And it's a uh, it's a nanoparticle, so like um, silver nano wire, uh, silver or uh, like gold nanoparticle, and you uh, put it in your um, in your shell. Well, it kind of stuck because of the magnetic properties. But if you put it in the in the shell, you can, based on temperature conditions, the seed, the nano uh, seed, can grow and um, replicate the shape of the mold. Um, so you can use this to create silver nano uh, wires. So it's like a, a really cool uh, nano application. Another application I think is nano lithography. I think another one related to that is like where you have like a plate which has like a mold and then you um, you place these uh, particles um, and then they like also like grow within the mold and they could create like an array of different and unique structures made out of gold or silver. And I think I see the other question. What are some jobs where this topic is used? So with what I do specifically, I am focused on like the design aspect of these structures and creating tools that are like useful so it can it can go to like a wide range what i do i focus on like the optimization portion of it there's a wide field on design optimization um going even beyond uh, nanotechnology you can focus on like design optimization for um teams in engineering groups just in like the workplace um, analyzing how teams relate to each other and like giving feedback on how to better work as a team in like engineering projects another one is in like trust design for bridges and design optimization for creating bridges to be able to like go around obstacles or to be able to sustain a good amount of like weight for driving along them why is it better to use DNA capsules for drug delivery than traditional methods? So I think I briefly touched on that. This is a really, I think, a cool application or cool area of research because particularly like DNA is like highly compatible with the body. Um, so you can create these tools that the body won't reject. And a really good application that one of the people in my labs are looking at is designing these tools so that they can enter the cell and the body and directly like go to your location of interest, the location that you're trying to heal with your drug. Because DNA is like compatible with the body, it has your gene makeup and you just encapsulate the drug that you want and it can open and close in the, in the uh, presence of specific target cells. Pitfalls or dangers of this technique. So right now this is a really new field the type of DNA that they're using is just from like a bacteria. You know, we need to work with other, other fields of interest like um, biology and chemistry to be able to create these structures that are directly compatible with the body. I have a question, Tito. Is this currently being being used for drug delivery, or is this something that would be used in the future and we're still figuring out applications? With the knowledge that I have, which is small, obviously, because I'm more focused on the design, um, but I believe that they have created, I think there's like the ones that are cubes, empty cubes that have uh, the drug inside that opens. And I think that they have like tested it with mice. Yes but I think they're still like working on um, actually testing it on humans. So it's the kind of thing, there's probably a few more steps yeah, and a few more approvals steps. that have to go yeah. through before you guys might see this in yeah. your average um, drug use. Yeah, I believe so. 
And are in your design experience, are some structures stronger or better than others? So right now, like I showed you a little bit of the, I showed you the filling application for my design tool. I'm currently working on coding application where I give um, like an input shape and it coats the input shape with a scaffold. And one of the struggles of my method, because um, simulated annealing is random, which is one of the, the methods that I, I use to route my scaffold. Um, simulated annealing is a, is a random technique. So one thing I noticed within my uh, coding application is that there are like gaps along the walls of the coded structure. So I'm currently working on um, eliminating those gaps. And once I'm able to eliminate those gaps, I'll be able to like test the strength of these. But to say one of the input shapes is a snub cube and it kind of looks like the icosahedron and the snub cube is the most robust input shape just based on like my tests for adequate coverage with the scaffold. But um, if that's all, I guess. It's the end of my presentation, and I was glad I was able to show you a little bit about the design process for DNA nanostructures. You know, you can email, like Ashley said, email the Biomech Andrew email, and I'd be happy to answer some of your other questions. Thank you. Yes, yeah, thank you, Tito, for that great session.